Hey hello everybody, this is Brent in Central Arkansas and we're going to do some work on the tomatoes today. Uh, they're getting really bushy and they're blocking out the brassicas. Um, I've got cabbage and broccoli planted in there and you can't really tell right now. So we need to do some trimming. And then after we do the trimming or pruning, we're going to um, go back and do some spraying. And the spraying I'm going to use is a form of the antifungal that I used in the microgreen grows. So we'll do that as well. But I'll just give you a quick look at what it looks like, these tomatoes. Got a lot of flowers. and Got a lot of little baby tomatoes starting to grow too, so that's good. Alright, let's take a look right in here. This is too dense. Now you need foliage for photosynthesis and impart sweetness and taste into the fruit um, but there's a point where it becomes counterproductive especially when growing in tight places in the greenhouse so what we need to do is we need to increase airflow and we're going to do that by removing some of the leaves from the bottom upwards until the first fruit cluster at the very least all right we're starting to clean up from the bottom up here and while I'm doing it, you can see here that this is a sucker. It's between, it's in the crotch of a leaf and the main stem here going up. And uh, most of the time I remove those, so we're going to do that. I'll just cut this one straight in front of you. And it's just as simple as doing that. When they're that big, you, uh, you need to use some uh, scissors or you could actually do what I did here and break it and then it'll pull some of the skin off so you can avoid that by cu actually cutting it and when you of course your utensils should be sterilized if you are concerned about disease I've got a couple other examples of smaller suckers here's one it's just that simple just pinch it and I've got one over here that is right there you can bend it one way and then bend it back the other way and it comes off pretty easily so that's another way to do it now because these are breedings I'm looking for the next generation and I'm calling out weak ones as well now this plant is not very strong it's a weak plant weak foliage it has a smaller cluster the fruit sits not uh, really working and if it's not taking off by now uh, it's not competitive it's not aggressive and I don't want it so I'm gonna take this one out since I'm growing two and all these pots, once they get taller here, there's only one string. So you have to do a couple different things. Either put them to the string individually or you can clamp them together to one string like I did here. Um, I did this last year pretty good, pretty successfully, so that's what I'm doing here. I don't think it'll hurt whatsoever with the breeding work, especially since these are... I would say a medium small tomato. Uh, most of these are going to be about that size, I imagine. You see, I did it here as well. I like this plant. It's got a good fruit set and uh, a good size cluster on it. If you do a side by side, this one versus the one I just cleaned out the lower branches here, you can see that there's actually brassicas growing in there, the uh, broccoli and cabbage. Now I didn't time it right. This is probably when the cabbages and broccoli should be small, when there's enough light and room in there. Unlike here, uh, the cabbages and broccoli are still alive, but they're going to be um, leggier than they should be. Uh, but hopefully everything will still turn out right, fine with them. We'll see. Trimming leaves also allows you to remove higher pressure from disease and insects because they tend to start on the lower leaves and a lot of different disease and insect pressures. New growth obviously hadn't had time to develop it as much. So trimming not only helps with airflow and bringing in light uh, to anything below it, but also it, it helps uh, remove some of that pressure from disease and insects. So that's another good reason for trimming. All right. Yes, there is brassicas underneath all that foliage. I'm going to make up uh, some of my do-it-all mix. And my do-it-all mix is very similar to my antifungal mix, except I use more neem 
and I also if I see chewing insects I'll add spinosad so eventually I'll do a, um, a video on that but first I want to make sure that since I'm reducing it I want to make sure the impact and knockdown capability is there before I put something out there that's not helpful so we're gonna do that I'm gonna spray some and I'll show you that Okay, we're here at one of the rows, and I want to show you, I've started spraying, but what you want to do is you want to really wet down that foliage, because most of what's in here is a contact spray. Uh, it's on the insect, and it does, uh, it does the insect's body damage. Uh, there's some aspects of it, like neem as as a directing in it, and that will uh, have an effect on chewing insects some to a degree. But most of this is a contact. There's also a deterrent. The oregano is also a deterrent. So you want to spray really thorough. You want to get that really dripping wet like that, and it doesn't take that much. Some may be wondering when is the best time to spray and the answer to that is pretty simple actually it's when the Sun is not bright <laughs> either early in the morning or late in the evening when there's some light left or when it's an overcast day and that's because when the foliage is wet and the Sun beating down it could damage the uh, the leaves the foliage so that's the best time This tomato has 69 flowers on this one trust, truss, which is a good bit. It's probably the biggest one I've got, but it's fairly common. Just right next door is more. There's just a um, phenomenal amount of flowers the cherry cross makes, and these are not going to be cherry size. These are going to be uh, double to triple cherry size. This is my cherry. You can see one of the trusses here. My hand for reference and trusses up here. And when it's grown outside uh, in direct sunlight and really hot high heat it even produces more trusses. So I'm expecting these to really start hitting the really big trusses multiple fruits up to a hundred um, flowers per truss and fruit actually uh, nearly as many fruit a high percentage of fruit set it's really good really enjoy that cherry and that's why I crossed it
when you breed, culling is part of the process. In this pot here to the right, you can see I cut one out and I cut out both of them of this. Now, I did that throughout all the fawns and I'd say there's probably four or five with nothing in them and that's okay because I'm going to replant with, uh, I've got some grafted tomatoes. I'm going to do a video on that. And um, I've got another mutant of uh, tomato of mine that I am growing out. I actually only had two seeds I was ma managed to save from that, and only one of those germinated. So that'll be an interesting grow. Part of this is uh, may seem unfortunate to some of you to see all those tomatoes. I, I'm not doing it so I can eat all these tomatoes or even give them away. I'm doing it to get the next actual line that I'm going to carry forward so that's part of it so we'll end this video and uh, I'm enjoying the way things are going it's going well and uh, yeah just a little update on how the plants look uh, and what I'm doing with them and more to come this sprint we'll see you guys later Did you know you can subscribe to me? Check it out. Click right here on the subscribe button. See that? It's got a little check next to it. If you click on the little bell to the right of it, it'll bring up a little notification that says send me all notifications for the channel every time I make a video. Click save. You'll get an email notification that I have made a new video. This is for those who don't know. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.